。好，现场的球迷朋友们，我们已经呢关上我们的场灯。等一下呢，我们活动会正式开始，所以我们麻烦所有的球迷朋友们，请先尽速的入座。但是在行走的时候呢，也请小心，小心你们脚下的阶梯，不要跌倒了。这边也提醒各位，记得把随身物品带在身上，不要弄丢了。感感谢你们，那我们呢？等一下比赛的过程中，也请这个球迷朋友们不要站在走道，也不要把手呢靠在栏杆上，以免呢发生危险。感谢各位的配合，我们的比赛准备要开始了。All right， 那就交给我们的气氛大师 DJ 上。我们来自新北的街道，我们来自新北的街道，我们来自新北的街道，新北街道，新北街道，我们来自新北的街道，新北街街街街街街道，我们来自新北的街道，新北街道街道街道，我们来自新北的街道街道。我我永远不知道明天会发生什么事。结果到底会如何？要怎么面对？我是个凡人，我不坚强，我没有底气。偶尔夜晚会流下莫名的泪水。住在拥挤的城市里，却迷失在人群。而我伟大的目标又是在哪里？而我的骄傲，我的信心。这边呢，再一次的提醒所有球迷朋友们，麻烦帮我们尽速入座，麻烦帮我们尽速入座，因为呢，现在是这个下班潮，现在是下班潮。等一下呢，我们今天场馆内呢是全场爆满的状态哦，所以等一下还会有陆陆续续，你看到的空位都会有球迷朋友们呢，陆陆续续的补进来，所以呢，趁现在还没入座的朋友，帮我们迅速入座，不然等一下呢，你可能会被挤开来啊、哦。啊，我们呢这边呢还恳求各位，感谢各位的帮忙
我们现场的球迷朋友们，可以跟着我们 DJ 上的音乐一起敲打节奏。我们等一下准备要开场喽。新贵的球迷朋友们，大家好！哎，今天上班日，很多人还陆陆续续的进场。那我是今天的主持人，球给彭尊的彭尊。大家好，我是你们今天的主持人，我的名字叫做汉迪，汉迪利。现场所有的球迷朋友以及观众朋友们，给我跟彭尊一个最大的尖叫声！耶、yeah! ！今天应该等一下还算满场，大家不要担心，陆陆续续的会进来。没错，好的，一样，像我们在冠军赛后的全新口号 ，We Ready， 一共呢总共有七个字母，也代表国王最终的七场试炼。我们拿下七场胜利，迈向我们的顶点荣耀之路。那今天呢，是我们冠军赛的 Game Two， 非常感谢呢国王的赞助伙伴申宝和我们一起捍卫主场。那除了一进来呢，二楼呢就有森宝摊位之外呢，中场我们将进行森宝障碍物挑战赛。我先讲奖品，奖品呢是森宝四 K 六十五寸的电视，好不好？哦呦，听到这个暴动声了吗？对，所以等一下呢，我们会找四位球迷朋友们在中场呢跟我们一起参加森宝的挑战赛。再跟大家说一次奖品。四 K 六十五寸电视，没错，大家给我们申报一个尖叫声吧 ，Come on！ 没错，哦，好，感觉大家都想要拿到啊、哦，非常需要，看球赛很开心。没错，好，当然呢，在我们冠军赛，我们也准备了满满的城堡活动给诸位。那我们有这个 We Ready 签名墙，大家可以在我们的英文字母的 A 写下吗？你们想要对我们敬畏军们想说的话，希望我们今天可以顺利拿下属于我们的胜利。那还有呢，非常呢，我们大家非常受欢迎的就是我们的宝座，大家呢去宝座呢拍下你的王者的照片呢，上传到 IG 呢，我们也会送出光周边的小礼物。没错，那当然呢，还有我们的三分球预测，以及我们杨敬敏 MVP 套圈圈，还有我们的塔防神射手，以及我们森宝投篮机，还有 Area 零二跟我们 New Taipei Kings 联名的城堡夹鞋机，都在我们城堡里面呢，等你诸位去体验。那讲了这么多呢，在比赛开始之前，我要先需要到我的好伙伴。DJ 上，那我们从主持 DJ 到拉拉队，都将暴击你们的心脏。今天呢，国王将拿下胜利。你们问为什么？因为我们要把冠军带回新庄。让我们欢迎我们的 New Taipei Queens。All right, we ready. DJ Sound, drop the queens. If all of the kings had their queens on the throne, we would pop champagne and raise a toast to all of the queens who are fighting alone. Baby, you're not dancing on your own. Can live without me? You wanna, but you can't. Nah, nah, nah. Think it's funny, but honey, can't run this show on your own. I can feel my body shake. There's I'll show you how a real queen behaves. Ah,、oh, no damsel in distress don't need to save me. Once I start breathing fire, you can't take me. And you might think I'm weak without a sword, but if I had one, it'd be bigger than yours. If all of the kings had their queens on the throne, we would pop champagne and raise a toast to all.
掌声给我们的 New Taipei Queens！ 谢谢我们新北国王大队，感谢你们。本场比赛为冠军战第二战 ，Game Two 面对客队台北富邦勇士，捍卫新北城堡的就交给各位了。首先为各位介绍客队台北富邦勇士队，零号赖廷恩，一号陈范博彦，十号张文平，十一号洪凯杰，十五号谢宗荣。二十一号曾祥军，二十三号石伯恩，二十四号简廷照。接下来为各位介绍先发五人 ：Starting Five， 三号张忠宪，五号强生，八号周桂宇，十二号林志杰，三十二号赛瑟夫。总教练徐俊泽，助理教练吴永仁、江志正，评委号魏维，领队蔡成儒。请所有新北光的球迷朋友们，将目光移至上方，打一幕。This is a new territory for us. We've been here before. We made the playoffs, but we haven't done anything yet. We still got a lot of work to do. Lock in on the details. Lock out the noise. Are you ready? It's go time. Number nine, 全能后场指挥官，新北飙风玫瑰，李凯燕。Number twenty four, 关键大心脏，小胖洪志帅。Number seven, 观众拿来看。小丽，林立人。Number ten， 靳伟军，弓箭手，微笑射手 ，JJ， 绝用者。Number three， 来自国立体大，小敏，陈俊南。Number nineteen, 皇家大锁，榜哥林君宝。Number twenty five, 
来自政治大学 ，Omar 小 Q 聂 Omar。Number f i f t e 敬畏之门神，护国三 Q Crazy David。接下来进场的是新北国王先发五人 ，Starting Five。Number One， 就这样被你征服，叫什么雷？没说。直升机，年糕 ，Candy b e r n i c o Number s e v e n t e e 敬畏之瑞士刀，我大叔系，舒世勋。Number six， 金卫军是馆长，新北的阿美族战士，杨杨杨杨金兵。中间篮板上，助理教练马卡塔拉、许浩成，体能教练刘振宇，首席体能教练张崇熙，数据分析师林振宇，球队经理洪志虎，防务员邱博凯、吴崇豪，总经理毛家恩，执行长陈信生，董事长王文祥。现在呢，又来到大家最熟悉的时刻了。我们呢，这边诚挚邀请我们新北国王拉队 New Taipei Queens 一起呢，来大家教大家怎么跟我们新北国王一起进攻，一起应援。那么欢迎 New Taipei Queens。All right， 我们的新北国王拉队，我们的皇后们，我们的 New Taipei Queens 都准备好了。首先呢，我们要教大家的第一个呢，就是我们的防守，也就是我们的 defense。All right， 我们这边需要大家的拍拍扇以及你们的声音。好的，跟着我们新北光拉队一起来捍卫我们的王城嘛。Let's go， Let's go。Defense， defense， 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 defense。Defense. 好的，以上呢就是我们的 defense。The Braves hope to repeat history after yet another Game One loss in the finals. But on the other side, the Kings want to continue to assert their dominance and ascend as the new rulers of the Plus League. 
Amigo Yang Jimin led the charge with uh, 24 points, a man on a mission. And while the Kings import duo of, of Mullins and Manigo only combined for 22 points, they played pivotal roles in stifling the Braves to the lowest final score in plus league history. Not bad for an expansion team in its second year, making their finals debut. On the other side, the Braves have most improved player Jack Zhang Jun and Ior Zaisev combined for five blocks and 30 points, but their perimeter play had a bad night of all bad nights. 17 turnovers that the Kings converted into 16 points. The Braves' famous fast break, Kings won there 14 to four and killing blow. Quincy Davis double-double off the bench after a sold out Saturday night. What kind of crowd do we have here on a muggy day in Northern Taiwan where the humidity is increasing the temperature by five degrees Celsius can the weeknight crowd in Xingdong Stadium help the home team surge to a 2-0 series lead? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, seniors and youth. It's game two of the MRT series, a best of seven, first to four to determine the champions of the uh, plus league season. The higher seeded Kings and Braves uh, dispatched their Dreamers and Pilots opponents in their respective first round of series, a uh, best of five. And now it's the Kings who've notched the first win in the finals two nights ago. And have that first, shall we say, trapezoid filled in and the E in the We Ready filled in here at the uh, fan support board in Xingong Gymnasium where fans are still filing. And of course, after a long day of work, Outside of the stadium on Saturday night where fans were chanting one step at a time in support of the uh, plus league and our development but we have about six minutes to go before tip-off in a uh, game two on the Mandarin broadcast on the left is Chen Ziwei and a play-by-play Tai Bao Tai Jinji Chou Mi Pai Neu Men Ni Dao the plus league the Ying Wen Zua Polo Yao Kan Zong Wen the Jiang Ping Dao Nan Zhou 看到中文年节，谢谢你收看，记得我们的转播都要按赞。I'm Ryan, Ryan Chen, joined by Kyle Hudson. Welcome well, into the finals, Kyle. Yeah, thank you, Ryan, for having me. Uh, it's a good game one, but the Kings pulled away a little at the end, so hopefully we'll have a closer game two here. Well, because of the uh, results of the first game, the prediction of Chen Ziwei has uh, gone awry. He actually predicted that the Braves might sweep this series, and so now he's treated to the. Uh, Famous Tai Jing Jing meme of saying the, uh, I guess this is a eunuch from a certain TV series where it says if you give the wrong advice, you don't get to eat. And so they're making a joke out of uh, Zui's very aggressive prediction about the series. But the Kings really showed their preparation. Of course, they swept both games here in the first round here in Xingzong, and they look like the better prepared team despite playing one extra day in the series and against the Dreamers. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the Kings definitely came out ready to play, like you mentioned. They pretty much, the Braves came out and threw the whole kitchen sink at them. They threw, you know, different defenses. They tried to double early, but, um, you know, they had a good preparation and was able to dispute that. And... 呃，虽然我们需要麦克的得分火力，那对方毕竟有Manigo，Manigo对他又是一对一的争防。那我们既然在外线讨不到便宜，我们必须做出改变，在内线上面可不可以取得一些优势？这是这场做出改变的最大的
and he has three pointers made and immediately the Braves changing things up going with Zaisa but with Chris Johnson and the duo has worked well in the uh, regular season even notching a victory against the Pilots in the closing game. Yeah for sure uh, all these rebounds and uh, as we mentioned Quincy Davis came in with a double double and Mullins had 20 rebounds last game so maybe bringing in Johnson for a little more length protect the paint a little more um, just to stop grab some rebounds maybe push the ball a lot more so we'll see just his length try to get some more rebounds in and try to stop that Kings uh, big duo the Braves actually went to small lineups at times where Singletary had to play the black back line along with a local big and they certainly struggled when they were undersized and had to deal with the bigs by the uh, Kings, even though they were in foul trouble, really managed their second half really well to blow things out. As you notice, the Kings had a score advantage after every single quarter, even though the Braves might start quarters on a strong run. On the other side, it's Venti Hongzhen, who used to be a player for Roger Xu Jingzhe in a couple of stents. And uh, eight Kings used to be Coach Roger's players, totaling 31 years under his uh, tutelage. And so the question, of course, to Venti was how to go up against one of the best coaches in Taiwan. Dai是要富邦連續三年第一場都輸掉,可是富邦是一個反擊力道很強的球隊,他不可能在,尤其許家恩不可能接受二連敗的情況下。跟我一起配合過so Venti sharing that Roger will prepare the team well, especially mentally. They'll fight back real hard and won't accept two losses in a row in the series. You never know what he'll do because he'll give credit to Roger for knowing his former players very well. And Roger answering back that he did coach many of the Kings players and more so worried about them knowing his strategies, trying to come up with new solutions and new ways to try to win this series with the players he currently has and not included in the interviews but Roger saying that his team actually has less experience you could say than the Kings who have several veterans who are on the maybe sunset of their basketball careers. Yeah for sure coach Roger from the Braves definitely has experience uh, in these finals for the past two seasons you know they pulled it pulled it out and with this veteran King squad they might not have been in this type of situation before, but they definitely have the years behind them and a lot of knowledge and experience in other ways that they can bring to the table. And that type of leadership is definitely needed when you're in such a high pressure finals game like this. Number 35 to homing will be the crew chief of tonight's officiating staff and the Braves making a change with their starting lineup. Jet, Zhang Dongxian, Josh, Zhou Kui, Beast, Ling Sijie, Ira Zaisef, and Chris Johnson on the uh, king side of familiar starting lineup, Joseph Lin. Kenny Manigal, Amigo Yang Chiming, Big Sushi, Su Sushin, and uh, Byron Mullins. So besides Mullins having food poisoning and Omar starting his place in the third game against the uh, Dreamers, the Kings loving this starting five, but notable on the Braves side, they made a few changes. Of course, Michael Singletary's out with his personal finals low of only seven points. The previous was 14. But Beast has elevated the starting lineup. And number eight, Josh Jokoyu, getting his first ever playoff start as a member of the Braves. Yeah, for sure. Just having this 
Braves team kind of switch up their lineup a little bit. Uh, they weren't exactly successful in the last game. It's, it's a little little farther discrepancy than they like, uh, 10 plus points. So just trying to get some more athletic guys in there, trying to stop the Kings on their fast break and just trying to be competitive out there tonight. And you got to make small adjustments, whether that be through lineups or different defenses. But the Braves are showing that they're willing to make some changes in order to win this ball game tonight. Well, Josh did play a personal playoff high of 29 minutes, 40 seconds in the closeout game against the Lioneers last season. While Beast did start all three games in the first round, though, curious enough, scored eight points, zero points, and a 29 points in the sweep of the uh, pilot. So I wonder what kind of Beast will be getting. Some ball executive Tohon Tien will be throwing up the ceremonial opening tip. A very enthusiastic one at that. So, we need us to remind you all one last time, the Braves in their consecutive championships lost the very first game, though, by a much closer margin. We'll get into that as the floor is cleared off for play. The Braves have been in this situation before. Down one game doesn't mean this whole series is over. Still got a lot of games to play. Byron Mullins and Chris Johnson in the jump circle and the Braves wearing their... I had to think about this for a second. Their alternative blue set and the Kings with their playoff home grays. It's Beast to the corner with an early three on the way off the front iron. One thing that was pretty apparent is the Braves were trying to get a lot of early offense goings and not running the whole sets in the half court. The Kings the definitely game. are very versatile in their defense and switch very well. So the Braves is trying to get a quick shot off whenever they have a good opportunity. The big sushi from Post, but he misses. And Chris Johnson has got his uh, first stat here in the finals. That was a beautiful Isaac early look. And Singletary, the incumbents with the uh, Braves squad. Yeah, looking for Joss cutting through. Put it on target, but off. No look pass by Manny Gallets. Johnson stepped against the backboard. Safe from falling down with his good bud Byron Mullins, but it's going to be uh, out of bounds for the Braves. Let's get another look. Johnson active in this one. He only played one game of the uh, previous series. Well, that's another reason why to put him in, just to have a defensive presence down low as the king shot fairly well from the two-point range last game. So just having his presence, rim protector, long arms, definitely hopefully will decrease that King's two-point percentage this game. They're looking in for the Dicef early three is in, and that's how the scoring gets started in game two. You know, these bigs on both teams have the ability to stretch the floor and shoot the ball, and Dicef definitely has that advantage there. Ball go out of bounds for the uh, Braves as Joseph Lin attempted a shot, thought he was hit. Here is Isaac was the top scorer for the Braves for 20 points, but had endure quite a bit of hits and was also either the one making the mistakes or the receiving end of a lot of errant passes with the Braves. This time connecting with Beast, a long bounce pass to Josh who tries another three and it's down. Uh, so far this game, the Braves shooting a lot better from three points than they did the last. And that was one key point that we were looking at was just how efficient would they be able to shoot the ball today. No player only with two points on one of seven shooting. And this Sushi takes a hard ball, colliding into the defender. There is a foul on the play. Both players laying on the ground. Taking a little bit of time to get up. We see Josh get up here, but Mitsushi still laying down. Maybe trying to catch his breath. It's a pretty hard tumble there onto the court. Maybe they'll need a sub, though. And a goal's calling for a sub as we see some personnel come out on the court. Did get his hand on 
the ball or the area. Of course, the contact anywhere else could still result in the foul. If you're wondering if anything might be more excessive, thankfully he didn't hit his head on the hardwood, though there still could be with flash, even though there's no contact. He's up on his feet and uh, walking off on his own power. Oh, we see him walking off. Yeah, that's a good sign, but a hard loss for the Kings early as they'll, they'll need to find someone to sub to fill in Big Sushi's place. Kings are not carrying that many bigs on the play, as you see, I'm sure they don't appreciate Josh continuing with this arm motion. But the referees come out and they just indicate a common foul. Yeah, definitely wasn't able to brace himself there as pretty much landed flat on his back. Not exactly the ideal position to land on, but glad to see he's okay and off the court and hopefully we'll be able to catch him back in later on in this game. Now, uh, Mr. Walter Wong gave credit to the referees before game one, though. As of right now, I don't know if he's such an appreciative mood. Strolling the uh, port side sideline near the broadcast table. And the crowd definitely doesn't appreciate that as we hear a series of blues, but Quincy Davis checking in and shooting these free throws and knocks down the first one. He was four for six in a Saturday night's action from the line. An early stint. On the season, Quincy Davis was a plus 150 as Kenny Manigal, the pass right into his lap. A one-handed jam. Big four-point swing for the uh, Kings. That was just a sloppy pass by Jed and Manigal reading that perfectly and intercepting it and taking it down to the other end as the Braves try to come back down with the Chris Johnson fadeaway jumper. The uh, total from uh, Saturday's game was the lowest score of the two combined in finals this year as Byron Mullins answers back with a three. You know, early scoring lot so far as we're seeing the Braves turn the ball over quite a bit early on, just trying to find their open players. Davis with a tip, miss. Now trying to go to the other side, but both Braves bigs come over and combine for the stop. Now there wasn't a high number of turnovers, but again, the Kings converted a lot of those into a point for themselves as Zaisef gets the easy one, assist to CJ. And game one might have been a battle of small lineups, but game two, at least in the first quarter, two imports for the Braves and Quincy Davis and Mullins in there for their respective squads. Now we're seeing these bigs play a big impact both on the defensive and offensive end as the clock goes down. To the left side. Yeah. And what a hot start we have here, 10 to 10 after less than five minutes of play. Now we're seeing the hot shooting from both teams as big post up down low. Traveling, they say, it's Ior Zaisef taking the next step. After yesterday, there was a handful of uh, travels called in the game. Amigo, just a little bit of space. Two nights ago, he's very aggressive taking the ball to the rim, even on Jet. But now guarded by Beast, who sticks with him on the screen. Coming up to help, it's Amigo to handle. Flipping it to Mullins though. Off the mark, and here come the Braves. We get a lot of running going as Josh, now from the left corner. Oh. And as Isef taking a little tumble, there will be a foul on the rebound. 
Yeah, that's something the Braves are definitely going to look for is that early transition offense as we get our first break of the game here. You're watching the uh, Plus League Finals Game 2 of the Best of 7 here in Xingzhuang. We'll be right back. New Taipei Queens finished their first quarter timeout performance and uh, our reminder to leave a like on all Plus League broadcasts you see Amigo and uh, Beast in the one-on-one -on -one, the featured matchup in the previews before the series both of those members of the Ame tribe for uh, dishing it off off of a good defensive effort there Braves, once again, uh, have gotten off to leads in the first and second quarter, even made a little bit of a run in the uh, third quarter, but the Kings always seem to have an answer. Yeah, the Kings definitely ready. Uh, we talked about preparation early on in this game, uh, early on in this broadcast, however. Just everything the Braves throw at them, they seems like they've got, got an answer. And same thing here at 10 all, they were able to come back, tie up this game with 648 left to play. Getting Beast overlap as number 12. Stepping up for the first time, yes. Just that one-on-one -on -one matchup. We're probably going to be seeing that more throughout this game as Amigo fighting over uh, some tough defense by, by Beast called for the foul has held him up a little bit, but as we see here on the previous play, just perfect footwork there. Catching Amigo off guard and finishing with that nice little floater. One thing that happened in uh, the first game is the Braves rotated through 12 and then uh, 10 players substituting quite often. Now uh, they kept the score tight as Amigo pumped his own tires. No. Combined rebounding effort as David. Jams it home. Oh, well, you can't let that happen. Uh, just a little butterfingers there, but we talked about Quincy Davis having an amazing game. Uh, game one, 16 and 10. As we see Jet miss very poorly there off the backboard, but Quincy Davis is coming up, stepping up, creating offense and rebounds, and exactly what they were for. We see a miss there, but offensive putback just in a perfect place, ready to grab that rebound and put it back in, so. You know, Zaisiv and Johnson's got to play some bigger roles on the defensive and offensive glasses. So far, it's too easy for the Kings. 14 to 12. Johnson misses the turnaround, and now it's Davis leading the break. But thinking better of it, over to Kenny Manigo, who's an over so far from three. But again, his defensive is his calling card as this time Johnson picks it up off the deck. Two kills as Manigal got two hands on it. Now a little two on two on the break. Over to Zaisef. To Josh. More driving and kicking and finally a three second call on CJ waiting for the shot to go up. That was great ball movement there by the Braves just pushing it and finding the open man. But the problem is you gotta take, someone's gotta take a shot. Can't keep passing the ball around. Uh, plenty of open opportunities there as Lighting and checks in guarding Joseph Lin. Migo has the uh, fake double screen is for Manny Gall. Oh, 
Working his way left. Floating up to Mullins, who's only got Reich in the beat and misses the dunk. Here, as I said, came in a little bit later to help. And they stopped the Braves with Beast. Liking the fresh in the game, finding a little bit of space, but Josh almost dropping it in Manny Gold's awaiting arms. And there he comes, jumping up on the Zaisa, 55 on Little Lightyear, and then just a little foul in transition. And yet another turnover for the Braves in the first quarter. Manigold has just been eating the Braves' offensive line on defense as he's just been very active and I would say a good foul here by Lighting and um, you know Manigold definitely could have overpowered him and shot that layup so might as well make him earn it from the line here as he did miss the first one so it's a good foul was well, 86 percent in the uh, playoffs cumulatively Braves Right now only down by two, but have made so many mistakes in the uh, first quarter. Don't have many personnel controls for them as Steve Otamwamping is about to check in. Coming in for Tokoi, but not after a word from the 24-year-old uh, point forward. And uh, Otamwamping reminded he's got to be helping out with the inbound. Lightyear bringing it over against former teammate and Joseph Lynn, trying to be the only one on the Kings side to have three personal championships as a member of the Braves for two seasons, and now the Kings. He's now trying to put the moves on. He pulls up for three. Oh, big bounce to Byron Mullins, and a foul on the backside. And uh, no more fouls to give if you're the Braves. We saw that handoff by Lighting and he went actually to go ball screen for Beast to try to get a switch onto Joseph Lin and I feel like Beast had a pretty good matchup there in terms of size and strength against Joseph so maybe we'll keep looking for that switch uh, later on in this game but decided this time to pull up for a three. I would have liked to see him attack the rim but Manigo goes right at Stevo for the lay-in. But nobody checks him in transition, so he brings it over the timeline. Back to CJ in the pink sneakers. He'll try a three, but it spins out. Seems like the parades are settling for some not-so-optimal shots here in the, the first quarter. They started off hot, but they need to make some adjustments on the offensive end. And Manigal overshoots the three. Quickly in transition, Steve from the corner, two bounces and out, and Lighting Un takes it away from Q. Zaisef as Amigo finally joins the defense and is missing the dunk. Lost the handle there, and it will bounce the way of the Braves, but now a couple misses for both sides trying to jam it in. Uh, seems like the ball just slipped out of his hands. I actually would have liked him. I like the like him attacking the rim, but. He's such a high percentage three-point shooter. Uh, I don't know why he's hesitating to take that shot. Well, whatever you choose, you definitely need to score the basketball on the road because the lead quickly going to five. It's lighting in over to Stevo on the uh, right side. He's going through the middle. It poked away by Manigal. This time he's got a step on lighting in for the lay-in. But no timeout by the Braves. This game could get out of hand fairly quickly if the Braves don't adjust um, as all of the momentum is with the Kings right now. Another miss three by Steve-O. Lee Kayan's best in the game. Up to Manny Gall. One man to three. Pops it over as Davis missing the putback, but not for a lack of effort. KJ's fresh in the game. The base, though, as Lighting in floats it in. Finally stopping this Kings run. Great, great push by Lighting in there, but we're just seeing a lot of preemptive shots, very early shots in the shot clock. Um, you know, you definitely want to push that advantage, but got to be smart shots, and so far the Braves aren't taking those smart shots. There's a whistle as KJ was on the floor. 
but he'll be the one called for the holding on Davis in the mismatch. Yeah, KJ just doing everything he can to try to slow down Q as, you know, he would definitely had great position on him, had the easy mismatch. Um, he probably would have put it in the basket, but instead he's getting free throws in. Knocks the first one down as it's 2014 here in the, almost the end of the first quarter. No good with the second one, so it's a uh, 20 to 14 at Kings lead. At, you remember it was 10-10, the tie at our team commercial timeout at about 6.52. As Mike Hill, unchecked, gets a free lane. He's so crafty and just moves the defense very well, not only with the ball, but with his eyes. Devo read the pass as the ball <laughs> through the hands of three players. He'll stay with the Kings as number 24, TJ Jantings. Oh, will come in for Stevo. Missing his threes on the outside, though. Galloping down the court as he's known for. But you gotta be making those shots when you're left open or it seems it'll turn into the oppo opposite, oppo opposition, excuse me, leaving you open. Joe with the floater, no. Long ricochet will stay with the Kings. Yeah, that's the one problem with these three balls. Not necessarily in this situation, but those long rebounds definitely lead to transition uh, opportunities for the other teams. But Kings here with the ball on the sidelines. Lee Kai in. Guarded tightly by uh, TJ until he finds a little crease to Joe. A wrist shot is off as Mullins controlling it with one hand. A chance for the Kings. Kyle to Mullins driving left, taking the contact and the bounce. Maybe a little bit of luck, but he won't mind as uh, Byron Mullins will have an and one coming up. We're seeing the Kings definitely take some more shots deeper into the shot clock, and that's what I like to see as they're keeping the ball moving, attacking different defenders. And yeah, uh, that's just strength right there as he shows off his muscles in that pose, but after getting his hand slapped, able still to control the ball and finish at the rim. And just beautiful play, beautiful ball control, and the strength that we're all as he sinks his free throw for the, the and one. Now Mullins with six points. Not the leading scorer of the Kings, but Certainly a much better start than uh, two nights ago when he had three fouls in the first quarter, the last one being a charge. With the charge block going his way tonight, at least early goings. He screams as Venti fresh in off the cue. Going right, slipping it to K JJ, no. And it will be a uh, great basketball. Both Marshawn in his gray suit, Roger in his black suit as Jack Zinchenjun will come into the game. His final 27 seconds, the Braves are looking to get a good shot off here to bring some sort of momentum into the end of this first quarter as they've been pretty hot in the beginning from the three-point line, but have grown cold here. Spain pick and roll being set up is Jack. Zaisa, four seconds left. Right here, will put a runner, no. Mullins looking for an outlet. It's Davis a little bit too deep, just as the time expires. Hopefully everybody's all right on the baseline, it seems so. Yeah, you had a full head of steam there coming in. I bet those people on the sidelines there on the baseline probably would have been a little bit scared, but the Kings strong first quarter. We'll go to a break and back with the action here in game two of the Plus League Final. Nobody 
，欢呼的感觉，欢呼的感觉。啊，这是标准示范。Let's go. Come on, baby, just pump it. Let's do a move. Pump it now. Pump it now. 可以哦，可以哦，一起帮我们西北国王加油，跟我们阿宝做一样的秀字唯一，几连霸，三连霸，但这一霸我们让我们留在新庄，跟着阿宝一起比一个爱心。可以哦，哎，阿宝有自己的粉丝团是不是？欢迎龟龟来到现场，欢迎你。这个颜色 T 恤颜色非常正确啊，有备而来。Hello。So the Kings do it, a uh, second of sold out crowd here in their uh, playoff run. Notching their first four wins on their goal to make it seven. The Braves on the other hand, crazy that they have seven things to accomplish to make it to their one championship. And in the early goings of 23 to 16, the main thing that I saw from the boss score is seven brave turnovers. Three of them to Kenny Manigal, the leading steel man of the Plus League. His defensive presence, always a big concern, whether on ball or off ball. Yeah, he just has excellent basketball IQ, able to read passes and know exactly where the offense is trying to go. And either getting there first for the, for the steal on the pass, or he has very quick hands as well, just poking a lot of balls out. Deep to JJ, who's around to fire it. As Davis comes down and will brush it out of bounds, so the Kings bench looking for some help. Not be given on this possession. Did have to fight over Zen Shangjun and a CJ there. Backdoor, but Lai Tingyun lost the handle for a sec. The Kings recover, but it's DJ with a brick. Having to wipe his hands off his jersey after that one. Now they're missing these shots pretty badly. Just bounced off of the top of the square, didn't even hit the rim on the way back, so they're gonna have to make some adjustments if the three ball's not falling, then you're gonna have to do something else. Maybe uh, penetrate the paint or just try to find other ways to score than relying on that three ball. A beautiful. Stop and pop for Mikhail over his former teammate. Increasing the lead to nine points. And the foul, so Kyle went to the floor. I could get another look at that one. But first, a uh, timeout called by the Braves as you see Lee Kayin coming up with the. Uh, First score in the uh, second half. And just a little bit over a minute in, we have our first commercial timeout of the second quarter. We have the following messages for you, the viewing audience. Yes, sir! CBA, watching with his wife, Bo Jiawen, member of the uh, Thai Power Basketball team in the uh, WSBL here in Taiwan. And 
and a Rakuten uh, closer. Hughes also in attendance. And uh, you might have missed it on the screen, but Roger <laughs> turning around in frustration as he had a play set that was not run. But a little bit of a zone by the Kings as CJ from behind by JJ and an unsportsmanlike the ref signals. Yeah, it seemed like a pretty hard foul, just maybe just grabbing him from behind, pulling him down a little bit, but we'll definitely get a replay on that. Mike Hewn throwing the assist, and the ref must have said he had no chance against the basketball, so that's why the unsportsmanlike was called. I would say a little, a little far away from the basketball. The yeah, first free throw made and a great chance for the uh, Braves to make some headways into this deficit. DJ hits them both. And his only appearance in the uh, playoff run uh, so far, 16 points, 11 rebounds, only one assist. Okay split, but was minus five in the, that game against the uh, Pilots, but the Braves eventually pulled away from in Parliament. Going around the world as uh, TJ with a missed shot and a second chance for the Braves. Too deep for the pass as Johnson avoids stepping out of bounds with four seconds left on the shot clock. He goes to the base and can't make it in. That's a tough shot. Uh, Johnson's known for his uh, fall away jumpers though, but couldn't connect on that one as the Braves had a pretty deep shot clock there. A quick three by Kyle misses, but grabs that offensive rebound and that's just something the Braves need to work on is they're, they're rebounding on that defensive side. Davis trying to get through a crowd. It was a foul. At Sunshine, Jim did get a hand on, but the block will not count. <laughs> As we mentioned in the pregame, he had, uh, with, along with Zaisev, a combined five blocks, but Coach Rogers still identifying protection of the paint, a high priority for the Braves. Davis rattling in the first. Just these second chance opportunities are not treating the Braves extremely well early as these points can add up in the long term, so I like to see Johnson try to box out more and try to locate more of these rebounds coming off the rim. Early horn set as light here. He's in the fire, pushes three as Johnson with ah! one hand flies the ball and gets the put back with a bonus. So they finally run the uh, Horns to a success, mainly on no bigs down there to block out CJ and uh, Kings trying to argue there was no contact on the swipe. And, uh, might be unlucky this time. Yeah, lighting in was drawing Q all the way out to the three-point line as he was guarding that initial three-point shot, which led to no one down low. And then just great recognition there by Chris Johnson to grab that board and sweep up. The Byron Mullins in there for Davis. As Zaisef could not bat it out, he's fresh in the game. Kyle on the double screen, but a foul first. It's the uh, second on the uh, Braves this quarter. Out there for the Braves. Z, CJ, Jet, KJ, and uh, TJ. And once again, their rotations are much shorter than they were in game one. Jet trying to stick with a pile. Out to Mullins, who drops it. And uh, eventually, the former King and KJ picks it off. Throws the back foot pass into JJ's arms. Or just some miscommunication there as Johnson was looking for that ball, but on the other end here. A block Big by block. CJ, and here come the Braves, wanting to at least get a shot up. Loading up to Zaisev, who lays it up and in. That yeah, well, was good rim running there by Zaisev as Mullins wasn't able to get back to, to stop him. And, you know, on a two-on-one situation like that, 
dishes it off for that easy, easy basket. So the uh, Kings now calling a timeout. Uh, in this second quarter, they have had the benefit of a couple Quincy Davis made free throws, but have not exactly found their rhythm. Though the comforting thing is Amico hasn't been in there as they're attacking Spearhead. They did have a lot of heroes in their game one victory. We already gave credit to Quincy Davis for his double-double. Venti had two main threes in a game where a three-pointer for gold. Yeah, we're seeing, definitely seeing Q having another great game tonight so far, just being very active down low. Um, just his presence on the offensive glass is trying to bring more, more breaks down, which could lead to more you know, opportunities for kickouts. But so far, shooting, not exactly the, the highest percentage that they're looking for. Definitely a little better than they did last game in, here in game one, but the Braves need to look for a little more open opportunities, I would say. Um, being a little stagnant, settling for a lot of guarded shots, a lot of fadeaways, so we'll see if the Braves can adjust a little bit and try to push the ball a little bit more, get into more of their set plays to find the shots that we know they're capable of and we know they're able to hit. Well, on the uh, nine field goals and seven free throws made by the Kings, the biggest thing that stands out is only four assists. So a lot of one-on-ones for the uh, Kings attack. And they haven't exactly gotten to run on the fast break as much as they did in game one. A little front court pressure as... Big Sushi getting up to Venti, who crosses the timeline. JJ off the down screen and back. Going back door, Johnson there as the pass. Aarons and Jet picks it up. Trying to recover from his poor effort in game one. Into the crowd and a foul on CJ with a reverse. It won't count. It was a risky pass, but it pays off with a foul. Yeah, he was triple teamed there down low by Mullins, Big Sushi, and Kyle. Um, thread the needle here in between these three players. That was a great pass, but great catch by Johnson as well. As we'll see maybe uh, a set play here to try to find a high quality shot for the Braves. Seems like they're running a fist, maybe. Just a fist held up by TJ. Out of the sign of Jet. Off of a deflection as Manigal tries to lay it over Johnson, but off. Josh is pressing the game up to Jet. And Byron Mullins switched on to him. But they're quickly looking for a set, but Manigal puts it away. Whether it's not a good enough zeal or not a good enough pass, it's another brave turnover. Yeah, that entry pass was too low. But on the other side, oh, Big Sushi with a close miss and a little unlucky with a ricochet. Will be Braves basketball. Would have been a great assist by Kenny Manigold as you see TJ kind of flashing in there. Now, unfortunate there as the ball bounces around everywhere but in the basket. As we see Amigo is looking to check in here, he's going to the scorer's table. Josh spinning right into Manigal, and it will be a jump ball. Stay with the Braves, but again, uh, number 55 wrecking havoc on the Braves offense. Just that active hands, right place at the right time, and it's more skilled than you think. He, he knows exactly where that ball is going. Brad, as you bring that below your body, you know, his hands are right there waiting to snatch it. You can't do a front spin on Manny Gold. You gotta turn your back away from him. Z, half of a shot big. Now to Johnson with James putting a good defense in. What a great shot anyways. Number five, Chris Johnson with the tray. And that's a tough shot there. That was great defense, like you mentioned, Ryan, by Big Sushi. But Chris Johnson's just long arms in his high release point. Gets that ball right over Sushi's head and sinks it in for a tough, tough shot. Johnson on the switch. James missing the close one and 
little bit of a stumble there. A little five on four for the Braves. TJ from the left corner overshoots it as Manny Golf <laughs> bounces it all the way to his good butt Mullins. And here comes a three on three for the Kings. Amigo. First out of the oh, he doesn't miss. And a great street breaker for the Kings. Yeah, Amigo just getting in, but he's ready for that shot as you see offensive foul there. Uh, Amigo screen by Johnson and Kenny Manigold's fire up here in the second quarter. Doing everything right, both on the offensive and defensive end. He's pressuring the ball extremely well on these fast breaks, finding the open shooters in. On defense, just making it extremely hard for this Braves team to set anything up. Get another look at two going at forming a wall to get Manny Golf, but leaving Amigo, who is the leading scorer by per game average, left in the playoffs. Take a shot off the back iron in the face of Beast, who's on a quite a bit of rest in the first half. Jet down low with Venti trying his best, and eventually a foul call. A very Our physical battle there. Down on the, the block is Jet felt like he had a, a mismatch, just trying to body Venti. We see some grabbing there. And then the uh, contact with the hip. Kind of catching Jet at the right time. A little hop there. In game one, Jet was only a two for 15 and really called out by Coach Roger for having a pretty lackadaisical attitude, especially yucking up with his good friend Joseph before taking his craft seriously. We'll see if these free throws can kind of wake him up. Yeah, I definitely felt in game one, the Kings wanted to win more. They just worked harder. They got a lot of loose balls. They're very active on defense and on offense. And so far, it's looking a little bit of the same as uh, the Kings just making everything hard for the Braves, even though it's only a four-point lead. Seems like they're everywhere at the right time, but kudos to the Braves sticking in it so far, making sure that lead stays minimal and fighting back to take the lead here in the second quarter. Uh, Chris Johnson getting some advice and instruction from Michael Singletary on the Braves bench. Mullins screens for Joseph going left. Hesitating and then going to the rack. He's got the and one. Looking at the scoreboard. It is going to be a foul on uh, Jets. I'm so shit. Another look at the great body control, and of course, Joe ambidextrous makes him a lot harder to block. Finishing with the left hand. Now he's able to extend on the, away from his body. This is a little extra protection there as he hits that free throw as well to complete that three point play. And you know, we saw in game one, wasn't really active as much on the scoring side, but had a five assist to have his. Joker gets three back in the left corner. That's right, and Joseph was the second highest plus minus behind Amigo. Of course, as you said, without much of a scoring punch. Yeah, scoring definitely isn't everything. That's what most people look at, but you know, your contributions on the steals and assists definitely are valuable as we see. Joseph hits a nut, a three from the right wing. lucky ball, but it took skill to make the shot as the throw up to Zaisef a foul first, as kind of got sandwiched there by the two Kings coming over to help. You know, maybe Joseph heard us saying that he didn't score as much in the first game and try to prove us wrong here, just getting six straight points here for the Kings. The Amigo driving through to Mullins, but Zaisef with an inadvertent assist. I don't think that will count in the scorebook, though. Here is Zaisef on the other side with a couple free throws coming up. No good with the first. In this season series during the uh, regular season, he hit the second one. 
Substitutions coming up. Zaisef averaging almost 20 points per game on a 51% shooting. He'll be joined by CJ now. Another double screen, Joe. A little bit of space going around the world. Davis, Domingo. Over to Manigal. Three is off. Physical battle before the rebound won by the Braves. We're seeing the Braves push the ball still. Trying to work on that advantage. We had a little mismatch here. Dice up to Johnson. Big pass down to Josh. Now driving the floaters up and in. What a beauty. Great patience there, just trying to find the right guy. Shot fakes are very, very effective here in this game. As we see two shot fakes into a couple of passes and a, a nice floater by Josh at the rim over Mullins. Almost an errant pass, but Joe with a and another one! Oh, a lucky start for only to one a Joseph Lynn in this game. Wow, that electric here, catching it off the with Jeff with a big three to answer. Got to get back quick on defense, though. A little patience here as maybe trying to find a little mismatch or a switch, but... Dive by Johnson, no, dive by Johnson, dive by Mullins. As Joe driving on Z to Amigo on the right, the three is it's just the simple things, a bad ball that the Braves can't take the other way, turns into three points for the Kings yet again as the uh, King is trying to get the uh, mock to draw off the floor on their offensive side and finally joining their timeout as we remind you it is another sold out crowd here in a Shing Zong. Oh, we talked about it earlier. So, oh, go ahead, Ryan. The uh, Jingming Butler or Amigo Jingming to Jimmy Butler in uh, three playoffs increasing his scoring average year by year and there you see a red hot 52% from the field. And uh, Amigo giving credit to Coach Ryan Marchand and the staff for really managing the like his effort during the regular here. season and the critical moments, James the game that down. they needed to take. And even in these playoffs, you can you kind of think down. back to the very efficient 24 points in 20 minutes in a game against the Dreamers, game one if I remember. There you see the handoff, maybe we'll check the score, the box score, if he'll get an assist there. And here, Kenny Manigal, you thought Jeff had a coast to coast opportunity. Joe with the three, and Amigo from the deep corner, firing up the crowd and getting us to our timeout that we are about to get out of. Now we're just seeing these Kings get all the 50-50 balls. A lot of that is just uh, a lack of awareness and a lack of effort. There was so many opportunities for the Braves there to maybe snag that, you know, wild pass or get on the ground to try to pick up that loose ball. But the Kings able to come across on both of those opportunities and paid off for them with a three on both sides. No personnel changes for either side as Beast. Looking down to uh, Johnson as James. That's his bicep unintentionally. Uh, goes the Glenn right to Zicep. Uh, shovel pass. Hopefully everybody's all right. There's a bunch of crashes going everywhere. Joseph Lynn trying to shake it off. But a stop for the Kings out of the timeout. And a great angle there by the cameraman. Maybe a little, a little shaken up there, but Joseph, Joseph's looking all right as the King's very patient on offense. Amigo with the one-on-one -on -one moves, but Aaron with the shot. We see Zaisa pushing the floor, making a cue follow him, but 
This mother told it to turn over there by the Braves. Joe takes the contact, lays it in anyway. And again, the Braves veterans frustrated each other for not connecting on these close passes. Yeah, gotta keep your hands up. The ball can come at you at any time as we see Jet very show a lot of emotions there, a little angry that he thinks he got hit on the arm. Trying to get the reps to call a foul here, but beautiful finish. Absorbed all that contact. And Jet continuing to to provide lip. He's called for the technical, and Roger's trying to help out his guard. But to no avail, and no movement on the Braves bench. They like their squad on the floor, but it's Amigo with a free throw to make it a 10-point lead if he can. And it looked, looked like Jet was looking for any referee, and number 22 said, you've had your word, and a time for a free throw before you guys have another chance. We've seen this lead balloon to 10 points here at the near end of the second quarter in the first half. Two minutes 23 left to play, but the Braves got a lot of work on in terms of their offenses. Early bounces it off. With a put back. Now they got to get a stop. Josh with Manny Galt on the post. Getting baseline as he lays it in over Johnson coming over with a help. With Kenny Manigal with his eighth and ninth point of the game. So far the Braves moving the ball around. Not much movement in terms of ball uh, off screens, up screens, down screens, but a lot of one-on-one -on -one work here. Field and a splash in the face of Amigo. Carly, he's joining the scoring spray with an A3. Josh flying all around. And left in the ground. Overshot. And a break. Go for you. Over. Amigo there. So, one time the spill pays off for the uh, Braves. As uh, both coaches having an argument with the uh, referees or the scoring table. Yeah, a lot of talk here. Uh, both teams not exactly happy with what's going on in the last couple minutes. A little frustration coming on from both coaches as we go into this timeout here. So this is is Beast from Deep Amigo provided a pretty decent contest. And on the other side, avoiding the contact. Amigo only has one personal, but trying to psych Josh out of the layup. But the third year Brave providing a pretty decent scoring punch with nine points in this start. Yeah, we're seeing most of Josh's points coming in from within the around five, five to ten foot range. And that's exactly the space where I believe the Braves need to start attacking more, trying to get some more penetration in the paint, maybe some uh, ball screen, just try to get some more touches down low as their three-point shooting hasn't been extremely hot, but as we saw Beast hit a last, last three uh, on the possession before, so hopefully we'll get to see some higher shooting splits coming up in the second half, but overall they cut that lead down to five really quick with that 5-0 run by the Braves and we'll see how both coaches adapt after this timeout one thing that the Braves were given a lot of credit for is how their second generation of players were stepping up but if you look statistically and include game one yeah, five players averaging scoring the double figures if you include Johnson 16, but it's Beast with 12, 
Singletary with 12, Tim Chang Jun with 12, Jet with 12, and New Year's Ice with 15, but no other player averaging more than uh, five points per game in these playoffs. So still finding additional scoring punch from some of those younger players. It's Joseph bringing the ball up against Jet. 76 seconds before the end of the half. Amigo with be starting. Mullet comes up. Ball slips loose on the Formy logo. Taking a rush off glass as Kenny Manigal finally secures the board by the rifle pass. Rubber sounds and they wave it off. Just those 50 50 plays there. No one came to box out. Manigal came out of nowhere, snagged that ball. Just a little too late there on that shot, but that's exactly the type of effort that they're looking for as the Kings are getting a lot of second chance opportunities. So it's the Braves turn as Jet. Oh, look at the lucky bounce go the Braves way. Quincy Davis down low. Finally finding his opponent with the long, lanky arms. We see CJ with a clean catch and uh, even Quincy Davis. Not a miss, but a rebound. A pass right to Johnson. Over to the free throw line for a two for one. We're seeing a lot of success from Johnson around the rim. Two, three feet, just grabbing those extra rebounds and putting them back in. A lot of struggle here. Loose ball. Jet flying around. Kenny Manigal can't get the stop with Zaysa. With a put back, six seconds left. Amigo taking his time with a three. No, it's Joe from the corner. His try. Bounces no good. So in the end, a quick wave run. It's a 48 to a 47. They take a one point lead in the halftime. And finally, you could say, some life and some fire from the brave side sticking with their guns and their starting lineup but they have to play hard through the second half where you know coach marchand and the kings will try to defend home court we're at halftime here in shing game two of the plus league final這個這張這張 有點難嗎?不會啦,阿寶不會真的蓋你火鍋好不好 那我們的第一位,這位朋友,來,你準備好就跟我比個OK。OK了嗎?好,來準備哦。3 好球好球我們第一位的分數呢暫時不公開麻煩我們呢把球給下一位朋友在旁邊稍等一下來帥哥麻煩到我們的底線去感謝你好阿寶來吧
，准备，三、二、一，出发！哦哟！好球，上篮，失败，再来一次，再一次。啊，不是叫你重跑，不用怀疑。好好好，我们跑回来，跑回来。阿宝在等着你挑战呢。好球，好球。阿宝，我发现阿宝，阿宝那个假防守，蛮有样子的。好的，接下来是我们的美女。OK，OK，、okay, okay, 谢谢各位帅哥，慢慢把球交给我们的美女。All right， 我们呢，这位帅哥先到旁边稍等一下，然后公布成绩。好的，美女，我们再往后面一点。对对对对。好，再再后退一点，到底线底线。对对对。然后我们呢，因为你可能穿长裙嘛，对不对？裤裙，所以要稍微小心一点，也注意安全。好的，阿宝。稍微减低一下防守 ，OK， 好，准备，三、二、一，出发。A little obstacle course on the court where、uh, some sample fans are your、uh, cones per se at the、uh, halftime festivities. Well, so maybe the、uh, Zhang Zhengxian technical foul kind of woke them up as. To finish the first half, an 11-0 run by the Braves has actually put them on top of the game. You see, Ray Chen、uh, speaking to、uh, Mr. Lin, Father Joseph and Jeremy. There's the combined team stats where the、uh, shooting splits is heavily favoring the Braves, mostly on the difference of two-point shooting. Rebounding's evened up. Braves have a couple more assists, but they do have. Double the turnovers of the Kings, which played a huge factor in those kind of 50-50 balls, those loose balls. We called them the lucky balls a couple times. The Kings took advantage of it early, but the Braves really went pedal to the metal to finish the half. Yeah, exactly. Just Chris Johnson and Zaitsev down low, the big big man that we were talking about early with this、uh, certain lineup. They had a lot of offensive rebounds. That was something I was looking for them to try to pursue more, and we can see that in their two-point percentages as. Also able to shoot the outside shot there, but like you mentioned, the Braves turn the ball over a lot, and the Kings really capitalized as we see a steal by Manigold, who's been red hot on the defensive end, and also dishing some dimes off as well. But Braves would have to cut down on those turnovers. They want to hold this lead. They're coming into the second half. That is the key, isn't it? We haven't said Manigold's name hardly at all in that final stretch where. Of course, he can be such an influence、uh, defensively. But both teams going with big lineups early in the game, but we kind of reverted back, at least on the Kings side, to have Big Sushi in there a lot. And maybe it's to reserve Mullins and Quincy Davis's fatigue for the second half. But so far, it's not exactly paid off for the Kings. I kind of expect that to be a, a, a rotational change in the second half. Yeah, we'll definitely see some. Different lineups and rotations as both teams adjust. The Kings have been a little more present in the fast break offense and just taking advantage of these mishaps by the Braves. So we'll see if they stick to a, a faster lineup coming into the second half to keep that advantage or see just kind of how they want to want to play it as it's pretty much an even game coming here into the second half with the Braves only up one point. Not on the combined team stats. There's only six assists for the Kings. Three by Joseph, three by Kenny Manigault. But of course, Joseph had a couple big three-pointers off of those kind of funny scrambles going on. And Amigo, of course, doing his part. He's got ten points. But we'll bring you the leading scores in the next segment as the Braves want to split this opening two games. The Kings want to take advantage of home court. So we'll go to break before our second segment here at halftime. That's my day one. She like to have fun. Little super freak. She got that dumb dumb. 
That's my day one. She like to have fun. Little super freak. She got that dumb dumb. By the bar, they know who we are. Whoever said that I wouldn't make it far, it says my time on my Audemars. Hey girl, come here, girl, get introduced to my world. I like my girls in plural. She on my, she a squirrel. Hey, what's your name? Who you with? Glad you came. Can I buy you a diamond chain? Treat it like it's a wedding ring. Yeah, that's my day one. She like to have fun. Little super freak. She got that dumb dumb. That's my day one. She like to have fun. Little super freak. She got that dumb dumb. We can also look at the side of the big boy. Look at our boy. Have we managed to catch up to you? Dumb dumb. Hello, the side of the big boy is our big boy. Thank you, big boy. Every time you come to our tent, you always want to have fun. Ah ah. I'm going to turn the light on. I'm going to turn the light on. 我起床睁开眼，感觉在打 NBA， 每个夜店都在放我的 tape， 等柏林围观的观众。Hello， 两位美女，欢迎来到我们的新庄城堡，跟我们的一幕挥挥手，好吗 ？Hello，Hello， 两位呃，帅哥美女，我们可以看一下上方的大幕，跟我们的大幕挥挥手，好吗？没错，就是你，就是你，就是你。The Plus League line account keeps you updated to the award winners at the end of the season, of course. A game day notification when the action is about to get underway. We have about four and a half minutes to the uh, start of the uh, second half, but we need to get you updated on the leading scores for uh, both teams. Chris Johnson with 15, Eero Zaisef with 10, Josh Joko, you got the start. He's got nine points. Beast leads the Jet, also a starter with five, and so is Jet with five. So he's still trying to find the stroke. So you can also say he's tasked with guarding Kenny Manigold and Amiga Yang Jimmy on the defensive side. So it's a big task, but Chris Johnson had that early fadeaway. And the biggest thing for the Kings is he's been a menace on the offensive rebounding side. And with his length, had a number of putbacks kind of mitigating uh, Quincy Davis's advantage on the other end. And on the other side, it's the Kings leading scorers. Joseph Lin with 11 points, Amigo Yangjimi with 10 points, Davis with nine, Manigal with nine, and Abar Mons with a six. And a lot of the Kings actions that they like to run in the first game have kind of had to rethink them all with Zaisef and Johnson manning the middle, suffocating a lot of that dribble penetration. The three-point shooting, an inside-out game or outside-in game has got to be changed up for the second half if they want to create more distance. Yeah, exactly. These bigs with their long arms and just creating uh, a lot less space than they're used to. Um, so we see a tough finish there by Joseph Lin, but just their presence really creates an issue for these shooters as, you know, you're going to have to shoot over a seven-foot tall center instead of passing it out to the outside to try to get some more three. So with their presence it definitely creates some issues for the Kings so far, but we'll see how they adjust to that coming up into the second half. Just wait, Sanlin Ba. Let's ride. Take it. 
。哇 ，Hello， 两位朋友。<笑>果然是我们的司机馆长，告诉他们 We ready。Yeah, welcome to the new type of castle。好，我们现在我们现在还站在。这个走道上的朋友，还在在走道上的朋友。今天是爆满的状态，所以呢，我们也希望呢，大家可以尽速的入座，不然呢，这个动线会卡到别人的路线。有些人可能在比较高的位置，有些人在比较低的位置。那可能呢，我们中间的门口就只有四个，这样麻烦呢，各位这个。I'ma need you to back up, spilling the tea, you stirring the cup. I'ma need you to back up, I'ma need you to back up. I'm in the seven, I'm in the seven, I'm gonna act up. I'ma need you to back up, I'ma need you to back up. I'ma need you to back up, spilling the tea, you stirring the cup. I'ma need you to back up, I'ma need you to back up. I'ma need you to back up. Hell is you thinking I'm jumping the leaky leaky? I'm thinking you better get back up. I'm thinking you better get back up. Come on, come on, come on. Our future, this is our Queen or Queen? Hello, welcome to our new Drum City. 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 Offensively, you know, you got a lot of your star players that you know are pretty comfortable shooting the ball, scoring the ball, and you kind of expect that over time. But so far, we've seen Jet be a little more defensive-minded throughout this game, and even though he's trying to get a couple of shots up, so we see Chris Johnson and uh, Travel there taking a little shot afterwards. The refs aren't happy, but. Your key players can also contribute in other ways, either defensively, um, as we've seen Manigold do through multiple steals so far. He's creating a lot of offensive opportunity from the defensive end for his teammates. So many ways to impact your team positively, other than scoring. But mostly, people look at scoring, and so far we're having a pretty high-scoring half. In the first half, so I don't think one guy's gonna make or break your team, as a lot of these other teammates on both the Braves and the Kings are making a lot of shots. The shot is up, but the referees say not in time, as Big Sushi was left open. 
That was again, they double teamed Joseph on the screen and they did rotate around, but Mullins had a shot. After actually relocating though on the roll. So the Braves, good effort, but maybe a little lucky too. And we are scoreless after a minute plus in the uh, third quarter. Where's Green to Beast? As Josh tries to catch him too. Ooh, a bad miss. As he or Zaisev, look what I found. I guess any way you can do, get it done. Aaron pass as Amigo kind of win a physical battle with Beast in transition. They put him back on Beast and the guy is going to jail with an A3. Just like in game one, the Braves come out very strong in the second half. Just putting a lot of pressure on the Kings early, but we're seeing a double team, early double team by on Joseph. Owens fires away. Johnson pulls it down and a chance to increase the lead to a three possession game. Had to do that math there. These with Mullen switched on him. He's giving him a step. Under on the screen. Pulls away and that's a bad miss. Kenny Manigal right through the middle and now turning it around. Back close up by Johnson as the Joseph win this time with the right hand. The danger with Joseph Lynn is just his ability to score with either hand. And you know, in this situation, his right hand was perfect and he finished it extremely well. Just blew by Johnson and finished on sides and took on both bigs. And, and able to come throw. out on top. Unfortunately, you missed that free throw there, but just some active offense there as Joseph tips the ball as well. Modified pistol set is yet. Gets the reverse. <laughs> he and Joseph took a little bit of tumble after that. Two more points for the Braves, so good friends really battling it now. Owens goes left to the screen, but Manigal rejects it. There's a foul on the rip. So far we've seen the Braves come out with a ton of energy here, attacking, not settling for three-point baskets when they have the opportunity, as we see Jet finish with that um, under the rim, left-handed layup, but I like to see them attack the basket more. They're There's playing tough defense about, uh, as well. Push off by Manigal, he has four seconds left. Moving right, floating it up, and a miss. East with the board. Now Josh, looks like he's running the point in this lineup as he and a Jed or a Beast could be candidates. Too much wrestling on the position battle. It's gonna be Big Sushi with a personal. Look for a little big to big action with Johnson. Look for his eyes down low. Just a little elbow in the back there as you can see. Just trying to get position. Easton Zeiss in a two-man game, but the pass is batted out, and Josh comes back for it. Only five seconds on the clock. Z, shot flake, and a dislodge from the basketball. Numbers for the Kings as the pass pass right to Jokori, up ahead to Zeiss. Maybe got to get the stop, and it's a facial. Oh, he's up raising the roof here, just... Just bringing a whole bunch of energy as Manigold tried to block that shot, but just not enough height and the wrong timing and put him on a poster there. No movement on either bench as the ball is loose. Jet trying to take on a couple of teams. He lays it in with the left hand. And there's a timeout called by the Kings. Right now held to just two points in the first about three and a half minutes of action as the Braves have opened up to a top four lead in the away game. Braves are behind their bench, making themselves heard. They're trying to get a victory before heading back home. And really led by this starting unit, 
trying to catch their breath as we try to catch our breath before coming back from this commercial timeout. Let's go! We have many fans are following us. This is love. DJ Song trying to get some energy into the home crowd, but right now I don't wonder if it's feeding into the uh, Braves run and getting a, a strong start in the second half and their biggest lead in the series, albeit only through a little bit more than two and a half games. Some uh, errors on the uh, Kings offense, curiously enough, in transition. And that might be one thing if you have such an aggressive point uh, guard like Kenny Manigal, he might get in a little bit over his head with the passing. But they post up Byron Mullins with Quincy Davis in the lineup now. Over Nigo, the uh, brave switch as that pass goes way over the head of everybody. Hopefully the camera person can shake this one off. Immediately a turnover. So far in this third quarter, we've seen four turnovers so far, very uncharacteristically of them. All back to back to back as Jet Miss is uh, about a five footer away in the short corner, but can't be turning the ball over this much as they have translated to points as we've seen. The Braves have a 10 point. And we can see Davis go with that shot. It's gonna be an air ball. And another trip for the Kings coming up with nothing. They have five turnovers to only four field goal attempts. Josh feeling ahead of steam block by Davis. It will go out of bounds, but making up for the misplay on one end, Uncle Q does it on the defensive side. Sticking with the play and uh, those long arms needed every inch of him. Yeah, just time that perfectly. A whistle and one. And a sneak attack out of the baseline inbounds. Yeah, Jet just getting early position there on Joseph Lynn and those extra inches to his height was able to allow him to muscle it up and finish at the rim. And Jet with the free throw as well. Trying to fire himself up, was right in the face of the King's bench. Some risky business, but whatever it takes to get the Braves veteran guard going. Amigo on the down screen and forced way out. He's just playing textbook defense. Nowhere for Amigo to go. And go trying to attempt on the drive in a blocking foul. They call it on, I think, Zaisef, who gives his uh, thoughts on the play. Yeah, a little angry because after the play, Manigold threw it behind his head, didn't know who was there, and hit Zaisef in the back, as you can see. Uh, cut it a little bit short, but... Down there with Davis. And he commits the travel. Switched his pivot foot a little bit on that entry pass. And then just try to try to spin around Johnson there. So you see, move his left foot, then moves his right. Good call by the refs. Johnson down low. With a fever of movement around him. So far he slips into Johnson putting it up for a miss. 
the Kings get a stop. Now see if they can run. Jeff brings him with the foul as Amigo fires away. He got it. Some shifty handles there by Joseph Lynn just maneuvering himself through this Bulls defense. Strong around three defenders. And found Amigo open in the corner for that three as we see in beautiful behind the back there. Drew Zaisev up. Amigo ready for that catch and shoot three. He's on the uh, handoff. His Mullins switched on to him. A jump pass right in the hands of Joe and uh, another bad decision by Beast. Flipping it behind. Oh, Johnson. Beast avoids the uh, interception and then Joe strips him. The Braves do keep on possession, but a good defensive play by number one. A yeah, great defense all around. Good rotation there by Johnson to time that perfectly and on the other end. Amigo able to slow him up just enough for Joseph to come in there and swipe down on that ball to make it force a shot here by Zaisa. Misses at the rim. And we see the Kings pushing the ball. And he goes, takes some contact and there's a whistle. Gonna be on Jokwe who's kind of working something off of that right shoulder as Johnson puts in a word. Oh, kind of unlucky for Josh Jokwe who was trying to make himself into a statue. Yeah, taking an elbow straight to the shoulder probably doesn't feel that great as he's trying to massage it out. Luckily it's on uh, not on the shoulder that's taped up, but he might have to tape that shoulder up now. As Manigold's at the line, shooting two free throws with just a hair under five minutes left to play in this third quarter. Well, the first substitution for the Braves on the quarter. Typically, it's maybe like the Pilots or the uh, Kings to have extremely short rotations in the third quarter, but Coach Roger, barring from some of the other coaches' playbooks or strategy books, Manigal, 10 points, 4 assists, 5 steals. He's the only plus league player to ever record a quadruple double with a 10 steals here in Xingguang in a regular season game against the Dreamers. Dawson at the high post over the beast as Q jumps out on him. See a mismatch down low. Johnson and Manigal. There's a foul on the perimeter, though, as the Braves don't go that way. So it'll just be an inbound on the sidelines as Davis got a hand in. They got to find Johnson sooner on that mismatch. Let's see if they can try to get it again. Uh, you see Camigo guarding Jet. Tough fadeaway is off the mark. I don't even know if it hit the iron, but it's Manny Gall charging with a head of steam. The Mullins will push fire three. He got it. Good counter run by the Kings as they bring it within five. Pop that ball in rhythm and ready to shoot it. No hesitation. And that's exactly how you want to shoot a catch and shoot. Really confident in the shot. Another missed shot and the chance to close the gap. Nobody checks Manny Gold as he tries from three short. Ray's playing a risky there. Oh, Manny Gold jumping that pass. Ready for that steal. Good, good awareness. He's trying to drop step. Now goes JJ the Zeiss up with three left, but no. Johnson to the Manny goal. Big pass ahead as it goes over the head of Davis. <laughs> Might have lost it in the lights or something. Yeah, it was a right idea by Manny Gold. Had Q all alone by himself underneath the basket. This may be a little bit over, or maybe Q was afraid it was going to hit the rim as, you know, it brushed, brushed the net. But we see lighting in, checking in. Ready to run Jet, this offense. Who's made a lot of questionable, overconfident shots, perhaps. 
Rescreened by Johnson as KJ steps further back. His knee is up and bounced out. It'll stay with the Braves with not much of an argument from the uh, Kings bench. 14 on the shot clock. Kings been held to only 10 points. Trying to get a stop. KJ with a weird uh, lefty lay-in. Mullins couldn't scoop it out. Wouldn't have counted anyways. Finally, uh, KJ doing what he does in his rhythm. Yeah, he found that space. No one came to help off that little screen and found a little opening there in the, in the lane and just enough power to get that in as we see Mandel just overthrow Joseph Lynn there. Was the man who kind of rotated open, but put a little too much mustard on it. So, Danny Manigal adds another turnover to his quarter. And we see Joseph subbing That'd out, and in comes number nine, Kyle, to guard lighting and doing a pretty good job, put a lot of pressure up high. Johnson screens as Beast gets into the mid range. Lie. Floaters no good and uh, ricochet for the Kings out of bounds. So a little back and forth here. These last couple of possessions having a little trouble to score on both ends of the floor for both teams. Um, a little slow, but we're seeing a lot of stronger defense as a lot of pressure early as Manigold had to throw it off the shoes of the Braves in order to keep that possession as almost lost it there. Davis up in support. Little handoff. As Mullins to Kyle. Not a clean catch. Three seconds left. Z put a, a good contest, but Manigal comes up with the board. Then for Amigo, that eventually takes it off. Another loose ball for the Kings. This time it's Davis. The misses from about eight feet out. Johnson makes sure to uh, establish that rebound this time. Didn't want to get knocked away one more time, but those are all those 50 chance, 50 50 chance balls we were talking about earlier, Ryan. Just the Kings just seem to get every single lucky ball. Didn't convert there as we see KJ shoots in the corner and misses. In and as out the Kings there. Manigal and Mullins on the side, a little floppy action. As Amigo, nice look right, but missing the pass. Graves have a little momentum as Beast again misses on the catch. KJ hook pass intercepted. Number four to Kings as Johnson, the only one back. Three, three is a miss as Davis couldn't get in position. The Kings can't buy a basket. At the same time, the Braves fumbling with the basketball quite often. Oh, I see. There's yeah, another yeah. case. Exactly. The Johnson turns around and Byron Mullins takes it out. It's a lot of rush shots here, not a lot of confidence I would say going into each shot a lot of second guessing so with the last 25 seconds hopefully we'll be able to get some two quality possessions to finish the third quarter Braves have no fouls to give as Manny has had to go tough but he's forced to a miss still some time for a possession Johnson yuring around Amigo and the lay-in is good still time for the Kings though Manigal fires from the corner and overshoots it. And uh, eventually concluding a, a stumbling, bumbling quarter where it's the Braves who continue to press their advantage. Find themselves up by eight, nine points as we head to the fourth and final frame of this one. Oh, 
向上方代步，跟着我们的阿宝一起做动作。Hello， 一起比个帅，我们比两个耶，没错。来下一位 ，Hello， 两位跟我们阿宝一起比动作，比个爱心，没错。Hello， 来跟着我们阿宝亲一下，跟着镜头亲一下，有有有，他一直在亲，好可爱，好可爱。好了，跟着我们阿宝一起做。Hello， 美女，跟我们阿宝一起做动作，来一起绕圈圈，没错。阿宝的手就跟我们三宝的电风扇一样，转速非常快，也非常的凉爽啊。好的，可以跟着我们阿宝一起体验。Hello， 欢迎来到我们现，很开心，很开心。跟我们阿宝一起把双手举起来 ，Let's ride！ Hello， 跟着我们阿宝一起，把这个双手放在嘴巴旁边，一起这样子比出来，告诉大家我们一起把声音喊出来。Hello， 美女，跟我们阿宝一起做一样的动作 ，Let's ride！ Plus the 球迷 ，All my basketball 是我本人在 IE 班学英文吧，教你的篮球英文术语，搭配 Plus the 影片，打造全新的线上课程，欢迎大家在资讯栏连接一起学习。So as we expected, the primary guys for their respective teams play the entire third quarter, and that leaves a big question as to how they'll manage their fatigue in the fourth quarter. Um, that last. 12 minutes, only a combined 28 points, but the back and forth, the diving for loose balls, there's no lack of effort out there for both teams. Yeah, for sure. I felt like the third quarter was definitely a swing quarter for the, the Fubon Braves as they kind of extended their lead even more, outscoring the Kings 18 to 10. And just getting a little bit more comfortable in terms of their in terms of their lead, but then again, it all comes down to this final quarter as both teams are giving it their all. As you know, the Kings want to extend their lead to 2-0. About what that ultimate decision will be based on mostly their physical health. And he admits maybe in the context of life with the team, he feels even better this season than last. 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 In that power forward for the Braves. Go for it, Johnson. Can he let it fly? No. Johnson comes down with it. Oh, shot. It's going to be a miss as the elbows flung with no contact. Oh, a lot of contact everywhere from. And eventually a foul call as Manigault. Almost looked like he intentionally wanted to take it. Now we see just to get Josh off of him a bit. Josh took like a set of three hits, probably from three different players. As you know, that was probably a warning shot first, bumped by Venti, and then bumped by Q. And finally, one final one by Manigold. Gotta watch out though. You don't want to commit an unsportsmanlike and. It's more than just a turnover. Now, to many golf's credit, he has been played pretty physically by any brave defender that's on him. But you don't want to take that emotion and make it cost yourself. Yeah. Well, having a word with uh, Josh, who Josh is a little bit of a smile, though I don't think it's out of a sense of camaraderie. You know, the Braves are known for coming out strong at the beginning of every every quarter, so we'll try to see that here as and a whistle though. Coming from the lead official, in fact. And it's gonna be they say Johnson who extend your leg. Uh, well, that's not exactly gonna win the argument with me. Yeah, it looked pretty clean to me. It looked like <laughs> I was just trying to step through and 
trying to drag his leg with him, not allowing him to go anywhere else. But as we see it worked out in the favor of the Kings as they regain possession here to try to kick off the scoring for this fourth quarter. Benty gets a screen from Q and fires away with Johnson, the one man ahead. Johnson and getting the reverse as you get the scoring started in the fourth quarter, albeit certainly not the cleanest of basketballs going on. Yeah, those threes can lead to long rebounds, which leads to fast break opportunities. So whoever shoots that three has got to get back. A foul against I'm doing against Manny Gold, who will have to earn it from the line. The temperament of the game has definitely got to be taken a notch lower. Beautiful reverse dunk, though. Just showing off his length as Manny Gold comes here. On that layup, got hit in the arm. Two free throws come in right now. Headwear is off, but now he is a four for five from the line. They're looking for his first three-pointer in these finals. Now Zhenshangjun just committed his first personal. And a two for two trip. As now the uh, Kings feigned a little bit of front court pressure and now back off. Two Bray's big setting the screen is way high as Joe is close to the scoring table. Back door, but Jack batting it right to Venti. Kyle to Venti in the left corner. This shot is good. Two Bray's go down. The crowd coming alive here with the chance of defense as Lockheed misses, but there's a rebounding foul. Amigo not happy with the call. You now the lead's cut down to six points for the Braves as the Kings are fighting back. So we see the foul called there, maybe a little holding on the right arm. KJ's in as well. For Lai ting who has not found the stroke. The playoffs, Lai ting has hit on a couple of threes as Josh calling the uh, player timeout too early, but going to be a turnover. Eventually the Kings discover. Referee finally get on the same page as it's going to be Kings basketball. You see KJ guarding Joseph here. Just We'll see if they try to double him early. Um, but they pass the ball off. Playing another ball handler and Kenny Manical trying to make a play instead. Bird after Davis, but Johnson taps it away. Look for Johnson down low. KJ though, rifling out to Josh from center field. It's all in. Berkeley calming things down with a three on the brave side. Seems a strong defense up top. It's Joe's turn to run it. Oh, they got a mismatch down low. Kyle taking it under the foul. And man, he took that layup a little too casually. He had a chance for an and one. He did, he did. But a nice find by uh, KJ out to Tokoyu, who, of course, is subject of uh, that early King's ire from that opening minute. As Nanigal will head to the bench and regather himself, Mullins will be in his place. And similarly, Zaitsev will come in for Johnson. Seems to me that 
Roger wants to match substitutions on account of fatigue and freshness for his imports. And definitely got a fine bounce coming into this last quarter. She don't want someone gas coming down to the final minutes. I want to make sure there's no mismatches on the floor in terms of effort and energy. He's hiding those one for two from the line. Trying to reach on Jed. He's got to step on him. Josh waving off Zysef as they're looking the other way. He takes a tough shot and it's missed. Eventually dive for the basketball. Joe picks it up. We've seen Jed take a lot of tough shots similar to that one. Definitely not what the Braves are looking for, especially with his shooting night so far. I would say try to find a better shot. There's a scramble on the play. There's a whistle as the Braves were about to go the other way. And it looks like Jin Chang Jun hasn't mastered the uh, Quincy Davis hand fighting yet, but the referees have a quick conference, so I don't know why number 22 is looking for uh, the crew chief. She's going to call a double foul, and uh, given that the possession was kind of in flux. We see Q still trying to plead his case here. On the replay. Oh, I think a double foul is maybe not the worst thing that's happening for the Kings. So Walter Wong inappropriately approaching the referees. Yeah, just a lot of emotion, a lot of energy here in this building tonight. A lot of care for this, this game, a lot of energy. Confusing enough, the referees have another conference though. And just both coaches just not very happy. There's already four brace fouls, three Kings fouls. And the uh, it's a good time to gather your team while they're taking a little break here. Trying to figure out exactly what they want to call. Perhaps something to do with the clock too. Because if the, if the scorekeepers reset the shot clock on a double foul, maybe it's an advantage to the uh, Braves. When in fact, the time came off the shot clock while the foul was being made and obviously no change of possession. So glad everything's settled right now. Braves possession. Kind of lucky Jet will retain possession, guarded by Lee Kai-Yin. JJ guarding a TJ. And it's an illegal screen on Zin Shang Jing. the second illegal screen we've seen so far in the last couple minutes. This one, yeah, we see him moving a little bit. And the Kings get the ball, looking to score on the other end. Mullins and Davis setting up the double as Joe giving a step. He falls away, but in and out. So a break for the Kings, or the Braves, excuse me. Zaisef on a bounce, so the Braves have not exactly gotten the ball down inside. Lucky you could get it back as Zaisef leaves it way short. Out to Davis, a big pump fake and a sidestep for his three. No good, and Jack comes down with it. Ever since that uh, little scuffle on that double foul there, we've seen both teams having a little a little trouble getting back into the, the rhythm of the game. This is a big test for KJ and TJ. It's in there. 
trying to find an offensive touch. Jack fires it away, and Z got a hand on it, but it's Kings basketball. Need to get back as uh, JJ out to Joe to reset. Here comes the screen. Joe crosses over left and takes the stuff. Dinshan Jr. reaching in there and getting the block. Will still be Kings basketball as Amigo in for Davis. Understandably pretty exhausted from the action to start. And uh, similarly, the Braves matching with Beast coming in for Dinshan Jr. Out of the baseline, Mullins to Joe. We got a mismatch, slipped the pass, and Byron Mullins got the play. Extra credit coming up on a nice connection with Joseph Lynn. Yeah, it was Isa coming up to, to help there, just trying to shut down that Joseph short, short jumper in the corner. We see TJ has to switch on Mullins, and that's a recipe for disaster for the Braves. Just holds on long enough to get that ball up and in as we see the lead cut down to six potentially five if Mullins makes this free throw here all right Mullins with 11 points on the game and uh, looking back on that replay TJ had a chance if he just got over a step sooner a second sooner Jet. With Joe guarding him tightly, hasn't even got a pass off. Well, we'll commit to travel there as not showing a limp. Another turnover for the Braves on the quarter, and finally a timeout called by Roger. We've seen Jet really struggle this game as just really trying to take it, really trying to take it to Joseph Lynn instead of finding the open man. One last break before the rest of game two here in Xingzong. on the floor for the uh, new Taipei Queens before the uh, basketball game will take us the rest of the way. One that we had for both teams is they're both willing to go small, but in the case of the Kings, Byron Mullins in there, creating a lot of havoc. You see, especially when the Braves like to switch with this smaller lineup, it worked to a bit of magic against the Pilots in that second game especially with a lot of young players out there. Yeah, specifically right now, if Zaisa gets off of Mullins, there's hardly anyone on the Braves team on the floor that can stand up one-on-one -on -one against him. And same goes for the other end when Mullins switches off of Zaisa. So look for a lot of ball screens using them to try to get an opportunity to have a guard switch on a big or a big switch on a guard down low. JJ with movement going to the right as a there's a foul, Mullins got the crease for the rebound. It will be Zaisef's, I believe, third. Mostly good defense, but you gotta finish it off with a rebound. Looking at the uh, total stats on the game, Braves 47 to the uh, Kings 40, but uh, Every time you got to think that the next one is the one that really counts. Against the guest of Byron Mullins. 
Looking on as the first free throw is down. And so is the second. Some, some full court pressure here by the Kings. Really not trying to make it easy as we see Jack get the ball. Joseph playing some pretty tight defense up on top. Finally getting out of Jet's hands. As he's with Kyle guarding him. Finally the screen comes. JJ on the front picked it up and almost through all of game two. Stepping around to Jeff Ayers. As Jet takes a stumble, Joe through on the way, but sure, the break for the Braves is now they got a three on three going. He's the first time, that's gonna be a travel. A little bit slippery perhaps, down in the restricted area. Some enthusiastic Kings fans showing off the dance. Yeah, right idea, right idea by Beast, but just a couple of his feet moved a little too much as he really wanted to get Mullins in the air on that shot fake. And another turnover by the by the Braves as the Kings bring it up on the court. Joe attacking right. It takes the pump, and the ball goes in. It's another and one. Now the Braves trying to get a travel call on him. The Kings tightening the noose on this Braves lead. The uh, Joseph Lynn handling on the pick and roll is what's working magic. And uh, funny enough, this time it's the uh, Kings calling a timeout, but maybe to let us enjoy some more Joseph Lynn highlights. Uh, this time, we're doing right and left, kind of walk, walking into, I should say, pun unintended, to that foul. Yeah, just looking away, he's a an open space on the right side of the rim. Good awareness. Overall, the defenders were and took advantage there. Perhaps a uh, fatigue timeout by Coach Marshawn. We're seeing this Kings crowd get really hyped up here with the remaining five minutes. Trying to give their players as much energy as they possibly can to come and overtake this deficit that they had starting into the fourth quarter. They cut it down nicely. Two points lead by the Braves. That's just a one possession game. Can change really quickly. And quarter to quarter, it's just a whole nother story because now with the Braves with the six turnovers, only two for nine shooting, committing eight fouls. So that's where the Kings are doing most of their work. Five for seven from the line, one for five from three, two for four from two. But the way the flow of the game has been in the fourth quarter, certainly leading toward the home team. Uh, it's all coming down to turnovers as we've seen each of these teams making some runs. And all that starts from the other team turning the ball over, you know, stepping up on defense, trying to put a lot more pressure. And these turnovers turn into fast break baskets on the other end or second chance opportunities. Chris Johnson in for Zaisef. But the rest of the floor looks to be the same lineup though. Roger is gonna put Mark in at the score table. Get a substitution in. It will be for Josh Dokoy and not if you ask me personally, who I think it should be Jeff, perhaps in there for defense. Yeah, I think they put Lighting in and to handle the ball as a point guard instead of having Jet take it up the court. They make him some more smarter decisions, trying to be the floor general here, trying to make something happen. Got a switch. Awkward handoff with Jeeves, who's got deep and somehow gets it to go. 
Lopez is a cold-blooded shot right there, pulling up straight on Byron Mullins. Off that screen, no hesitation. Not now scared. Mullins in. There's a foul first. Looks like it's going to be on Johnson and not Beaton who try to step in there to take the charge. And now a uh, technical foul against CJ. LV his fourth and fifth. And not let anything slide today. Get another look at the reach and the tug on the jersey. Probably lucky that he doesn't get an unsportsmanlike, even though, of course, he would argue it's just one finger. But pulling the jersey is technically a unsportsmanlike in the rule book. The referee giving him the benefit of the doubt, but when you add on a technical, yeah, it's kind of just adding up to the same thing. Oh, well, Migo knocking down the important free throw. Accurate free throw shooting has not exactly been the case in these playoffs. Overall, the field is only 62%. Now Mullins with his first. Got it. Yeah, free throw shooting can be the key to winning or losing a ball game as these are supposed to be gimme points and you know you miss those missing on a lot of opportunities to add up the score so he makes these and brings it to a one point game four and a half to go here's Isaac back in the Braves last got a three point made by Beast with all the attention in the world, take it easy. It's no good as here come the Kings on the break. Quick handoff and screen and roll with Amigo and Mullins. KJ closes it off. Now on the switch. Luke Hyen from the far side. He's driving. Good contact with the back and another and one. crowd here, everyone on their feet, except for the Braves fans sitting behind their, their bench, but the home crowd definitely showing why they're here tonight. Amazing move, amazing finish, got the little roll at the end. What a missed free throw as KJ, I definitely will think that he's not taking a lot of his hardly open threes on this side of the floor and causing the Braves to run more offense. Directly get the rebound is B splits the and lays it in. That was an easy basket there on the other side. Read that on the screen. Collins wasn't committed too much. Able to slip right through and find an easy lane to the basket. Go attacking, picks it up as Beast pulls it down. Trying to get a foul out of it. Now back on defense. Into the links to just show as no travel call, gets the ball back, driving again. Could have got something for his effort. But it's now a three-point lead for the team in blue as the Kings slow it up. We're seeing a lot of lead changes here in these last couple minutes, but the Braves are really utilizing, finding that mismatch, uh, whether it be on Beast on uh, on a big, but... With Amigo off the front iron, it was close, and Joe kind of stumbles into a foul. A little excuse me, and... Uh, only the fourth by the King, so not the most damaging foul out there. Aggressive play. Marshawn calling over the troops as Amani Gold subbed in. We see Beast attack the rim, had a little mess match as uh, Mullins is subbed out. So we'll see if the Braves are still trying to stick with their initial game plan. To, Try to go off these ball screens, a little away screens to find a mismatch for Beast, who's been on fire so far here in this fourth quarter. Been the catalyst for this Braves team. 
Kings are sizing down with James playing center. And with Kenny Manigal, more or less the power forward, but he's kind of shadow beast. Zaisa putting the move on, dunking it home. Here's Zaisa joining the play, and just like that, Kings, despite the substitution, forced to call a timeout here as the momentum, just like that, swinging to the away fans who are letting themselves be heard. Well, this timeout for best wise is going to be important because Beast obviously put in the effort to score earlier in the quarter, but you wonder if the ref was just slowing down. And on the King side, wonder how long they can go without either Quincy Davis or Byron Mullins in there with Zycep finding his sea legs. Yeah, we saw Manigold switch over to Guard Beast, just trying to shut that down, shut that option down for the Braves, but Zyson finding a mismatch of his own, um, just really taking it to the rack, trying to be extremely aggressive, which we haven't really seen much as he went downhill, looking to attack the basket and threw it home. Funny enough, as much as we kind of put the word out that Beast is going to be guarded by Kenny Manigal, Roger finished that conversation with game number 12 free. <laughs> One thing to look out for is the Braves need to be smart about their off-ball moving because Beast likes to have those jump passes available right underneath the basket. But Byron Mullins is back in, so that definitely throws off the game plan for the Braves. And we'll definitely see the adjustments here made by the Braves and the Kings. But also something to keep in mind is the number of fouls that each team has as we will be going to free throws uh, on the next foul, so something to keep in mind later down in the stretch as there's 2.22 left in this final quarter. Joe leaves it behind and avoids the uh, diving stop. Slip pass. He slams it over. You know, you can't gamble on a miss and then not be able to recover it. You know, the Kings made him pay. Zyce had a step up on Joseph Lynn and stopped that drive and just a quick pocket pass to Byron Mullins who elevates and slams it home. Kyan and Mullins shading Beast who slips to Zyce but the ball pops out. Kings down by three as Joseph Euros around and a foul first they say. Relatively speaking, a lucky break for the Braves. And a look at Zaisef, as you mentioned, dutifully stepping up, but nobody else as Beast was put on a poster. Too much elevation by one Byron Mullins. Yeah, not much you can do there. Just elevates too much, gets too high, and slams it home. Very quickly, Byron Mullins now the leading scorer for the Kings with Joseph just catching up with him with a free throw. Brings it to a two-point game here. Can cut it down to one. And he does. Joseph Blaine cuts it down to one point. One minute and 40 seconds left in this game. We got an exciting one for you here in these final minutes. And Roger Preston, TJ, the rookie, he's fouled, and maybe the first free throws for the Braves in the quarter. Kind of surprising everybody. Just very aggressive here on this drive. And there was contact to the face, so definitely a hard argument against the no call there. But TJ, too strong with the first. The Kings fans doing their best with their pool noodles and flag to really disrupt this free throw shooting here by TJ. And it worked on the first one. 91 seconds left in the game. He goes one for two. Now the key. How to stop the high screen and roll by the Kings. 
It's all come down to being efficient on your plays. They gamble correctly and a ball on the floor. Jet picks it up, avoids the stop. One man to beat and he gets the lay in. Not to be denied, the keys go quick. Can't gamble on that other end to give up an easy layup on the other side, but Joe falls again and uh, it will be a jump ball, which is a good result for the Braves. And uh, for once, we could say Joseph might need to slow down as the middle of the floor is kind of his trap right now. You know, with the four-point lead by the, the Braves, maybe trying to get a little bit too aggressive too early, just trying to make something happen. Luckily, it was just a jump ball and not a lost possession. A little rest by who has the floor is cleaned up with the Kings sideline out of bounds. Raise possession with the arrow. Joe in the corner. Mullins coming for the screen. TJ again on the bottom side. Doesn't come to help and an easy right-handed finger roll for Joseph Lynn. So not letting the Braves go. Uh, just a lack of help defense there on the bottom left side. And Joseph Lynn found that space. Was able to finish on the right-hand side. Not making it easy. Two-point game. 45 seconds left. Jet. Joseph Conley banks it home. Good execution has a little bit of a decoy, but Kyle going in fast, crashing into the defense. Good as the shot is missed on a scramble. Plenty of time left. To be able to be no, Joe with the hand in, but denied by Zaisek. Yeah, pass and Amigo gets the lay in. Wow! Just a scramble in. Just everyone just putting their best effort on the floor right now. Giving they don't it their have all. enough time left. They, they don't notice it. Zaisek with possession, and finally the whistle comes as the Kings, with poor awareness, with the shot clock and game clock, no difference. The free throws coming up. Yeah, we see Mullins. These Zaisek try to look and pass it between KJ and Beast, and even the experienced Zidor Zaisek. Going to be throwing an air and pass, but he's got a chance to make it up at the line. Number 32, his first. Strong into the right. 13 seconds left. The teams do have their player time now. And it looks like they want to call it, so they did need to secure the rebound. Amigo and Mullins on the bottom block. Beast and KJ in the middle. The second free throw is rattled in. In a three-point game, as Coach Marchand is going to reach into his playbook. And uh, Coach Roger indicating he wants to make substitutions. Uh, we got an interesting spot here, Ryan. Three-point game. 13 seconds left. JJ, Kyle. They could either go for the Amigo set it for JJ. JJ for Byron. Byron for Amigo to the top. JJ to the corner. Trying to get Amigo right back up at the top for three. If you don't have the shot, get to the rim. Try to get to the rim. We're in full court pressure. We got a foul. If we hit the three, if we hit the three, no foul. No foul. Maybe we'll have our first close finish of these plus three playoffs. If you couldn't hear, Coach Marchand wants JJ in a corner for a possible shot, but Amigo is the primary guy up top. Whether he has a three or they need a drive and try to extend the game with a layup. It's Beast on Amigo, going to be called for the reset. Joseph the inbounder. JJ flashes, then Amigo. Zaisa switched onto him. Running low on time. Byron 
taking just three short. Zyzev comes down with the board and there's a foul call even though the Braves wanted a timeout. There will be free throws. So the game is not over yet. Yeah, five seconds is a lot of time. Zyzev misses these two free throws here. Still a one possession game for the Kings to hit a three, but I think the Kings might have taken a little bit too long. Just looking for that three, they didn't necessarily have to take it. I could have got a quick two and then a foul on the other end, but very tough look there. Just off the front of the rim, but a big two free throws here by Zaisev. 5.2 seconds left in this final game. He's played in every single playoff game of this run for the Braves, but no attempt in the first game. Makes the adjustment and a perfect switch on the first. And yeah, that's not something you want to see if you're a Kings fan. That brings it to four points. So you either have to get lucky and get a three with a foul, or it's a two possession game here. A little bit of mission impossible. A missed free throw is not a bad result as KJ jumps in, and that'll be game over. 87 to 83 is the final as the Taipei Fubon Braves come in and steal a game and ensure this fi finals will at least come back to Xinjiang one more time. But next on the calendar is the same matchup, but at Huping Gymnasium, home of the two-time defending champion Taipei Fubon Braves, the new Taipei Kings have a strong fourth quarter effort and really gave the Braves a scare by holding them scoreless for possession after possession. It just looked like Beast was the only one who could manage anything as uh, the two huddles needed to be spaced out a little bit. Now they're ready to go as the Kings take back the uh, jump circle. Johnson in. Ira Mullins with some words. Still yeah. talking. You would think the the two of them, former friends, might be a little bit more cordial, but uh, maybe that just would increase the rivalry some more. Uh, yeah, I would think so. Friends off the court, but enemies on the court. And right now, after a tough loss, you don't want you know one of your buddies chatting you up after a tough loss. Welcome back to Sanjayi. Uh, We'll be uh, conducting our post-game uh, coverage, interviewing uh, Beast, who's uh, standing by, but definitely, hopefully, the cooler heads prevail for a good basketball game. 恭喜冠军系列赛的首胜哦，这场比赛真的是非常的不容易。到最后一刻才分输正负，之前先来聊一下，就是呃原本赛前大家都是认为看好勇士，但第一战失利，终于现在拿下了胜利，也算是压力
，接下来一比一平手了，那第三以及第四场比赛的备战，要不要聊一下你的想法？呃，先好好休息，然后先把身体恢复好嘛，这个是最重要。然后再好好的球队，因为毕竟。第二场嘛，他们就互相越来越了解，可能就要做一些一些方式吧，然后可能要再更专注在教练所给我们的内容，然后好好的准备好第三场。They need to be ready to head home. Yeah, 恭喜富邦老师在冠军系列赛拿下了首胜。那目前呢，富邦老师已经国王双打的系列赛是一比一的平手。那精彩的比赛，我们休息一下，继续回到主播台上。And we'll be going to break before wrapping things up from Xinguang, where the Braves are victorious. 比赛虽然结束了，但是我们还是希望大家可以留在座位上，稍微慢慢等一下。稍后呢，我们还有一场表演，有一个特别的嘉宾呢，要表演呈现给大家看。大家今天都非常辛苦了，不管结果如何，今天是一场非常精彩也非常好看的一场比赛。All right， 大家也是今天听到你们的声音，也都是表现得非常好。我们呢，接下来一样，我们。比赛不会停止在这，我们会继续的前进，因为我们的比赛还没有结束，这才是第二场而已。All right， 大家不要气馁。好的，那我们呢？稍等一下，我们先把时间交给我们的灵魂人物 DJ 上。等一下呢，我们会有特别来宾呢来表演给大家看。感谢各位的配合，等一下见。Tragic happens. That shit ain't no threat. You moving backwards if you suggest that you sleep with a tech. Go buy a chopper and have a doctor on speed dial. I guess. Man City. Man down. Where you from? Who you know? Where you from? Where your grandma stay? Huh, man? This Man City I run. Ride with the mob, hum do Allah. Check in with me and do your job. Erg is the name. Ben Bola did the chain. Turn on for the watch. Prezi playing James. Yamagini chain. Rest in peace to my superior. Erg man's nigga feed the village in Liberia. TMZ taking pictures causing my hysteria. It's a final here where. Despite maybe the sluggish start you see in the first quarter, down by seven, the Braves turn it around in the second quarter for the halftime lead and push their advantage in the third, but the Kings give them a real scare in the fourth quarter. There's the combined team statistics where the three-point shooting hasn't exactly risen up to the average or pulled up the average yet, but the quick pace of the game, Kyle, and the real sense of urgency displayed by both teams out there was really the highlight of this game. A lot of loose balls, a lot of 50-50s, a lot of scrambles that both teams took advantage of in the end. Braves, 24 turnovers, the Kings 18, but the Braves could walk away with a victory. Yeah, for sure. Something we talked about in game one is shooting percentages, and you know, the two-point shooting was fine, I guess, for the Braves, but hopefully we'll see these numbers rise again in game three, but just the Braves. It seems like they came off a little sluggish, like you mentioned uh, in the beginning, but they really came with a burst of energy in the third quarter and was able to fight hard in the fourth quarter as the, the Kings were threatening to come back. And it was just a great hard-fought game by both teams. At the end of the game, uh, Joseph Lin with uh, 20 points led the uh, Kings. One area that, according to the website, that both teams are looking out for 25 turnovers for the Braves, 20 for the Kings on the Braves side. They did have five players score in double digits, of course, needing Beast to carry them in the fourth quarter with seven. The next game, as we mentioned before, on Thursday at 7 p.m. at Taipei Hoping Gymnasium, where the series will move to the home of the Braves, who, if I recall correctly, lost the first game against the Dreamers, but then cleaned up two games against the Lion Ears. And so the Kings who notched their first road victory 
this postseason against the Dreamers. Coach Marshawn is saying that's a little bit of confidence for them, but it's a long series. It's a best of five now the rest of the way. Yeah, it should be a, a great next couple of games. The Braves were able to steal a home win here today from the Kings, and we'll see them try to, the Kings try to return the favor and steal a road win um, as well. So hopefully we'll see how it goes. Well, Zue maybe can laugh now that uh, his prediction's out the window, but if you made a prediction, uh, we'll see how it goes. So on behalf of Kyle, thanks for joining us. The sixth team in the league in league office, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.